Hello everyone. Uh, in this session, we are going to talk about on how to create a single sign-on between Salesforce and Azure. So this is a pretty common use case. Uh, the Azure would be an identity provider and Salesforce would be the service provider. Salesforce would make a call to Azure to get the identity of the user and it, Salesforce would validate and, uh, and if the validation is successful, the user would be able to log in successfully. So we are going to see the steps on how to create the SSO and uh, let's start. So uh, uh, in a, this is the introduction slide. So uh, as, I, as I told earlier, Azure would behave as an identity provider and Salesforce would be a service provider. The SSO would be established using SAML, SAML protocol, and this would be a federated SSO. Uh, so the prerequisite before we start is you should have an Azure account. Uh, if not, uh, then uh, you can sign up for an Azure account and uh, uh, you, you'll have to give in your credit card details and there won't be any charge and you can cancel the subscription anytime. So uh, let's start if I go to the third slide. So uh, here we, are, we have the steps to configure the SSO. Firstly, we'll configure the SSO in Azure. We'll create a test user uh, in Azure and uh, which Salesforce would use to check for the identity. Then we'll uh, give the newly created Azure user uh, permission to access the Salesforce application. Then uh, uh, our steps in Azure would be completed. We'll uh, go to Salesforce, we'll create a connected app and uh, we'll enable a SAML there. And we will use uh, just-in-time user provisioning to create the user whenever uh, someone logs in using Azure. Then we're going to test our SSO. So let's start. Uh, so to log into as uh, to Azure, just search for Azure portal. Click on the first link. Sign in. I already have my account signed in. I'll just click on that. If not, you can create a new account. It will redirect you to the Azure portal. So uh, you can see this is a Azure portal and uh, i have created a uh, i have uh, given my credit card details to uh, get the subscription for it and if i go to azure active Dire uh, directory this screen would load uh, so uh, firstly to set up an sso between salesforce and azure you'll have to go you'll have to search search for enterprise applications here if i click on enterprise applications uh, you can see salesforce is already added for me uh, or you can click on new application in the new application just search for Salesforce so yeah you, you have it here uh, just uh, select it and you will see the added applications here now just click on Salesforce now you'll see you can set up the SSO you can set up the user and groups I'll show you what we have to do so firstly, when you have set up, uh, added the application, just click on single sign-on. In the single sign-on, uh, you'll have some steps which we need to complete. So I have already set up the SSO for some previous org, but uh, just for our tutorial, we'll, we are going to do that again. What I'll do is I'll uh, go in my sales, I'll go to my Salesforce org and I'll click on setup. In the setup, search for uh, my domain. Uh, here you can see the my domain URLs. Uh, it is just loading. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can see my the current my domain URL. Just copy it. Copy the current my domain URL. Click on edit just paste it here after HTTPS. Uh, you'll have to do it for identity. You'll have to do it for reply URL. And you'll have to do it for sign on URL. Right, and just save it. Single sign configuration has been saved. So you can see the URLs has changed. You'll have to do it for your org. Uh, the attribute and attributes and claims would be the same. Uh, you can see these are the uh, attributes which would be sent to Salesforce to validate. 
the given name, the surname, the email address name and unique user identifier. Then we have SAML certificates. Since we are going to use uh, SAML protocol, so we'll have uh, so uh, what we can do is we can download this federation metadata XML and uh, we have downloaded it. What we'll do is we'll, uh, when we create a SSO in Salesforce, uh, we will use this XML file and we'll upload this XML, XML file so that we don't have to do the configuration manually. Uh, so I think uh, we are done in this part. Now what, what we have to do is I'll, I'll show you. Uh, just click on home. In the home, search for Azure Active Directory uh, and search for users. In the user, you'll have to create, uh, like whatever users have to log into Salesforce, they need to be created here. I've already created some users. You can see this is the newly created user. And the username is, uh, username is this. So uh, this would be your company's name since I'm using a free edition. So I am getting this type of username, but uh, like when you set up for your company, you'll have your company name as the, uh, uh, in the username. So I've already created one user, uh, for you guys can do that by clicking on the new user button. Uh, we have a create new user option. You can create a new user. You can provide in the username name and so on. Uh, so after you complete this, you'll have a new user created. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll again go to Azure Active Directories from by clicking on the sidebar. And now we'll uh, search, uh, we'll go to Enterprise Applications here and we'll click on Salesforce. In the Salesforce, uh, we'll, we'll have to go to User and Groups. In the user and groups, uh, basically the newly created user in Azure needs to have a permission to access the Salesforce application, right? So what we'll do is we'll create a new user. Uh, we'll select one user. Let's say I select this user. And I'll select both the users, right? And I'll select a role for them. The role would be standard user. As we'll assign an application for them. I've selected both the users and both the users role is standard user. So I think we are done on the Azure side. Uh, so we'll go now to uh, Salesforce. Search for single sign-on. In the single sign-on, you'll see these settings. Just click on edit. Click on SAML enabled. Firstly, click on save. Now, uh, as you already knew, we downloaded the metadata file. What we'll do is uh, we'll click on new from metadata file. Just choose that meta a newly downloaded file. I've, cho I've chosen it here and I'll create it. See, we already have the configuration for this. Uh, so in this configuration, uh, firstly, we have to change the SAML identity type to uh, assertion contains the federation ID from user object since we will be using the uh, just in time user provisioning just in user uh, just in time user provisioning only works for this uh, option uh, so one thing is that is left is we'll have to again go to single sign on settings and we have to download this uh, certificate certificate base 64 uh, just keep it and uh, in the identity provider certificate, just select this certificate. Uh, yes. So now uh, I think all the configurations are by default and it is good. Just click on user provisioning enabled. Click on custom SAML JIT with Apex handler. Uh, we will automatically create using a template that is provided to us by Salesforce. We will execute handler as system admin. Right, and then we'll just save the settings. So, uh, we, uh, like this is the part we have to do from Salesforce side. Now, uh, what we will do is we'll uh, click on this Apex class. This will edit this Apex class. So, I already have a Apex class created. I'll just quickly go through. We'll just quickly go through the Apex class, and then we'll just copy paste that Apex class here. 
so uh, this uh, handler class must implement the auth dot saml jit handler interface and uh, in this uh, interface uh, we have to define uh, these two methods one is the create user one is the update user so if the user logs in for the first time the update create user method would be created and if the user has already logged in uh, this update user uh, method would be created uh, we have the uh, federation identifier uh, to see if uh, federation id already exists in the user if it already exists then it uh, then it means that uh, uh, the user is already present in salesforce org so uh, after uh, let's say the user logs in for the first time the create user method is created now it will call in the handle jit method uh, this is the handle jit method uh, so if uh, it is a community login the, uh, these three things will be called as you know when a user logs in for the in the community for the first time account a contact and a user is created Otherwise, if it is a sale, normal Salesforce login, the handle user method would be called. So in the handle user methods, uh, we have a map with the user attributes. So uh, by default in Azure, the attributes are coming like this. So this, this is the key. So this is the key for the attributes. Uh, let's say it uh, ends with identity claims and name. So, uh, so the username would be this, then the email address we can get from uh, this key, the given name we can get from this key and we'll store it in the first name, the surname in the uh, last name, user dot last name. Uh, so we will get the, uh, let's say the language, the locale uh, by the current user uh, who uh, for whom this class is running, we'll get the, uh, locale and language for him and we'll just uh, uh, make it same for the newly created user then we have a logic to populate the alias and then uh, we are just populating the profile so uh, since this is a developer edition profile I'm, I'll be populating a, a standard platform user right and if it is not create user then it will just update user so uh, if I go back to the methods below we have two methods create user and update user this method would just return a user and this method would update a user it won't it uh, the return type here is void right so what now what we'll do is we'll just copy paste this whole class and add it to our our uh, salesforce org class and then we'll test our sso after that And let's see if that works. Uh, I'll just save it. Uh, now we are done with the setup on both Azure and uh, Salesforce side. So now we will test our newly created SSO. Uh, to test the SSO, firstly, you'll have to go to my domain. And in the my domain, you'll have to enable uh, click on authentication uh, click on edit next to authentication configuration and uh, just enable this checkbox uh, which is our newly created SSO in the authentication services just save it so after you save it uh, so you'll uh, so when you go to the login screen you'll see an option to log into the SSO using our uh, newly created SSO so uh, to test it let's just log out and see if we are able to see the option so uh, yeah we are able to see this option and uh, uh, we are also able to see the username and password login and also we are able to see this SSO login just click on this or login using STS now it will redirect you to the Azure page in the Azure page, uh, you'll have to log in using your account, Azure account. Uh, so this Azure account will act as the identity provider to Salesforce. Now, uh, you can see we have been successfully logged into uh, Salesforce and our newly user, new user would be created. If I click on this uh, user and click on user details, and uh, I think a newly user would have been created.
yes and the profile is standard platform user uh, this is the username which we got from uh, azure uh, so we have set up the languages for it and yeah i think we are good and this this is how uh, sso is being uh, set up for azure and salesforce and uh, i i hope you like this session and uh, please do subscribe to my channel for further videos related to sso and other topics